everybody and welcome to another Three Men and a Prop Tech Baby. And I am joined here today by my compadres, Mr. Richard Durant. Hello, Rich. How are you? Good morning. I'm good, you? Perfect. Lovely. non covid which is a benefit. Paul Morgan, you OK? Very good. Tip top. How are you? I'm I, well, look, as ever, looking forward to this little uh, snapshot of all that's good in the world of suppliers. And today we're going to be listening to Bruce from HiBA uh, looking at their IPAX uh, solution, isn't it? So who's going to take a stab at describing what that does from the outset? Who's going to who's going to be knowledgeable and say they know what it's all about already? Um, I, I think that's the Mr. Morgan. Well, it's, well it's, it's addi additional information to market your property to give you an edge over the other estate agents by effectively providing more information. So imagine we're at the time where floor plans are not ubiquitous, they're not everywhere. You're the agent that's setting yourself apart from the rest because you're making floor plans. This is floor plans point 2.0. Thank you. And that's the quickest ever three minute of prop tech baby we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've done that before we're having a, a, a sip of your, your, your cup of tea. Okay, that's a lovely way to set us off. So as usual, guys, what we're going to do, let's have a look at that. We've got eight minutes of video that Bruce has kindly put together there. He's going to talk through, explain at the beginning, I think, the proposition. We're going to then just stop it at points that we think there's, we've got something to add, goggle box style, and hopefully add a bit of context, or indeed uh, to, to just drill in with a few questions if we're unclear of it so that we'll give the, uh, Bruce and the team there the opportunity to come back to us, because I'm sure if we've got questions and quandaries, other people will have to as well, won't we? So uh, whenever you, whoever's driving this, is this, uh, it's not me, because I always bugger that part of it up. So I assume we've left that bit down to Mr. Technical himself. Mr. Morgan, let us loose. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bruce Adams from Hive, and uh, we've developed a service called IPAX. Um, I'm really grateful to the uh, kerfufflers um, for running through this short demo of mine that just explains what they are, how they work and, and the benefits. It's quite a short demo, only 10 minutes. Um, so why do we develop IPAX? Well, we develop them to, to speed up sales, reduce fall throughs and provide estate agents with a, with a great listing tool. Um, so, so what is an IPAC? Well, I've got a, an example on screen. Um, you can think of an IPAC as a a digital home sellers pack containing much needed information made available to buyers ahead of making an offer, but all displayed centrally within an agent branded website unique for every property. Now there's some really good benefits to showcasing this type of information as a website. Um, so we can make information really presentable and easy to digest. Um, as it's a website, the, the packs are constantly updating, they're device responsive, and content can easily be shared between agents and buyers, but we can also make them look um, good and bespoke with branding, and we can place call to actions to generate different types of leads for, for the agents. The, the development pool is, is endless. Um, so oh, when we work with agents, we provide IPACs for every property they make live. So the first thing that comes to mind, so as I understand it now, what we're going to be looking at here is that each property will essentially have its own micro site presenting all this relevant information. That's, is that, 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 is that right? Is that what we're going to be? Yes. Okay, cool. So they're hitting a, it seems to be absolutely on vogue at the moment, doesn't it? To, to be talking about speeding up sales by being, by being ready, reducing fall throughs and everything else. For me, the critical part of the next few minutes is, does this deliver in terms of setting itself apart from those other solutions that are out there at the moment? Um, because obviously, I think that, that that space is getting quite congested at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, there's clearly a desire for this solution in the market. You know, with information available at the touch of our hands, why wouldn't an agent present as much information as they can to allow the buyer to make an informed decision? So it's absolutely uh, relevant. I think the UX comes into it quite a lot, um, and that's going to become an important part of who wins, who wins this space. But, but it, has uh, to, it has to be put uh, as rich, sorry, doesn't it? Because if, if uh, you know, in the past it was obviously mandatory, so actually UX and everything else didn't matter. But if they're going down this route of trying to prompt people to go down there, then it's all got to be about that experience and what you're offering back the public to warrant doing this, isn't it? Agree. Okay. Why are you commenting on UX? Just this page we're looking at here yep. um, is branded IPAX by Hive. Yep. I've seen a version in the real world. 
and that IPAX by Hive branding in the top left corner isn't there, it's your agency logo that's there and it's your agency colours across that top bar. But so, it's, it's um, so I think reinforcing your own brand basically. Absolutely. Cool. Paul, I've, Paul, while you're talking about UX, um, the first and the only comment I've made is actually, for me, I really like that UX, but it's also asking relevant questions, those top three buttons at the top, you know, request a view and request evaluation, make an offer, yeah. clean, clear, and our uh, call to actions most agents would want. And what would be, uh, and as ever, because I uh, you look at the size of me, I'm always very hungry for everything. Um, what will, I don't know if they'll go on to talk about this, but it'll be interesting to see whether that just fires off an email back to the office or whether there's some sort of CRM integration as well. Because, of course, where this where, where this would really start to tick over nicely is if there is some efficiency gain there by driving through to, through to the, the CRMs. Yeah. Okay, cool. For a press play, in yeah. your opinion, do you think the market, you know, the average consumer understands what legally prepared means? Not a clue. Well, you haven't, got, you haven't got a clue on the answer, or you think they, they <laughs> haven't got a clue? <laughs> um, I genuinely don't think the public, and I am, I because I, I am one of them, unlike you two. I genuinely don't think they you, they know it's important, but I don't think they understand anything beyond that. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to press play. Okay. In their CRM software, meaning they can offer them as part of their standard marketing package. They're not an upsell such as a feature listing, for example, and that's a really critical part of, of how we roll IPAX out with agents we work with. Um, so let's move on and talk a bit about their content. So IPAX, um, they're not a standalone product and, and they can only achieve uh, the aims that we've set out for them where they are, are used as part of the overall customer journey from property listing through to completion. And what we really want to avoid is unnecessary duplication. So to this end, we work in partnership with Lifetime Legal who, who really strengthen our offering by providing a first class and fully managed AML service, which provides the legally prepared elements of the IPAC. Um, now, as everyone will know, AML in itself is a huge topic, um, and we run through this on a full demo, uh, which is quite a, quite a chunk of it. Um, but suffice to say, it's a very, very popular part of the offering as a branch time saver and giving peace of mind to the companies we work with that the AML is fully managed by people, um, including ID verification and enhanced due diligence. So um, the IPAC itself, you can see on my kind of example here, um, and I've just flicked through some different branding styles that we have a, a logo um, in the top left. We've got different color call to actions for request evaluation, request of viewing, share, um, and recently we've released uh, make an offer. Um, so buyers can submit um, offers to the branch, um, including all of their agreement of principle and solicitor information. Um, now, the top of the pack will show a, a message about what the pack contains. If we've been able to complete the pack with the legally prepared elements, this green bar will appear. If that's pressed, it will show a statement about what, what's been completed. So things like property information, questionnaires, fixtures and fittings, and land registry title information. I think that's useful. That maybe reinforces the point earlier about the public not quite understanding what legally prepared means. I think you know, I, it puts context around it, doesn't it? I also wonder about the having a property that is legally prepared in the vendor's mind makes them think I've done all this kind of conveyancing pre-work mm. and therefore I'm more tied to the agent because if I leave the agent, I've got to do it all again. And I wonder if this reduces withdrawal rates. I, I think they probably are. I think there's also a level of commitment because, you know, from an agent's point, what you don't want potentially is the vendor who puts it on the market, withdraws it three months later after you've got an offer. If they are prepared to uh, spend their time, effort and energy on, on providing all of this information, it probably increases their level of commitment and desire to sell. It shows their willingness, their seriousness. Yeah. 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 Particularly around fixture and fittings forms, which um, I'd imagine it's probably a... You know, once you've agreed a sale, it's quite an easy thing to think about. But what, before you agree a sale, it's probably a bit emotive. Yeah. Also, yeah. just just talking now, I mean, the background work being done by Lifetime Legal, I know that's, I think that's Rob Sendel, who's got a tremendous amount of history in this area. And they, from memory, they were working with companies like Romans uh, and, and, you know, really, that uh, a really well-respected business. So that's good that they've teamed up with them on that basis. 
It also allows the agent to be uh, more informed about the property. You know, you do reviewing and the purchaser or applicant, you know, are the curtains staying? What's going on with the lights? I want my offer to be subject to all of the light fitting staying and all of that sort of stuff. If you've got a pack, that changes your position in negotiation. Because if you know that you've got to go into that call with the vendor and knowing that you're going to have a struggle because it's going to be around lights, curtains and the office to include everything, you would start that conversation slightly differently. Mm. Um, Don't disagree. Right, I'm going to press play. Okay. Uh, and it's a statement that, that shows that it could lead to a faster sale because some of those elements have been um, pre-prepared. So the first um, section of the IPAC will be the media links. Now we've created IPACs to be a, a substitute or at the very least to, to work alongside a set of property details. So we pull in from the state agency CRM feed, all of the photos, any media links, um, floor plan, map location, so everything you'd expect to see in a set of property details. The second tile is the property information questionnaire. So through our processes with Lifetime Legal, we facilitate the completion of all of the TA forms, the TA 6, 7 and 10. Um, all the information, um, or the vast majority of it, is lifted and then put into the IPAC. And, and this is at the beginning of the process, so in advance of buyers making offers, which is really key. And we can highlight certain information if they're leasehold properties, for example. Um, we can put the length of lease and anything specific there to really highlight that information. So that is the legally prepared section, isn't it? The TA 6, 7 and 10. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and when we're talking about time saving, I'm not going to make any kind of statement on whether they can or they can't save you time or whether transactions happen quicker, because often it will depend on the chain and other parties. But ultimately, to get that work done before the property is under offer and offer agreed, you're probably saving seven to 10 days because often what happens is they get a quote from a solicitor, they don't fill in any of the forms, the offer gets accepted, people scrabble around where those forms, sit down, have a conversation, send it back, complete it. Um, there will be a time save if that, if that is done before offer agreed stage. Yeah, I remember the delay was always, there's always the applicants and the vendors rare. The delay was rarely the solicitors. Yeah. The third tile is the land registry. So during our compliance procedures, we'll, we will be obtaining full copies of the OC1 register and the title plan as well. And uh, we're displaying this information within the section. Um, we have a development coming soon where a lot of the information will be presented on the page and we'll be able to send custom alerts to the branches for key bits of information that we um, receive from the land registry. Things like well, again, just... length of lease. Is a, is a use. Stop that for one second. Do you want me to rewind again, back to that screen? No, that's absolutely fine. Again, having that information up front puts not only the buyer you know, better informed, but also the agent, and you can go above and beyond. So if when the pack's completed as an agent, you can find out what property is on a floodplain, uh, you, you're going to know that buyers will be concerned about insurance costs. So would you go to the vendors before you get the question from a buyer and ask for a copy of their most recent insurance so you can, uh, so you can answer any questions uh, and possibly pacify a buyer's concern when you say, actually, your insurance would only be X, Y, and Z because we've got this current quote. I just think it allows, it allows better conversations from agents. You know, if you are sat around that property on a viewing and somebody is talking about buying a property in order to extend, and you know that tree next to it has got a TPO on it, let's stop that conversation, because they're not going to buy it. It's just going to fall through eight weeks later. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything around, you know, occasionally people extend their property boundaries and claim extra land? Is there any visibility around that as well? There is isn't uh, there on the land ridge. Yeah, if there is some, yeah, it's if new. they've extended by quite a lot, I'm not sure anybody's going to walk, pace the length of the garden, see if they've nicked an extra metre at the back no, and so no, on. But, no, so, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's like if you've gone into the farmer's field or that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. For one. So 
the legally prepared elements are then fused with several data sets that we um, operate so or we source so we've got the epc um, we uh, use house price trends we use the properties postcode to plot the um, recently sold in your street prices along with average prices for property type um, we have um, school information so from the department of education we'll pull in the different key stages locations uh, and, and the performances of the schools across certain metrics and similar with um, transport links health local authorities policing and broadband mobile so potential buyers can see what the um, speeds might be for broadband and what the signal strength are for the uh, the main operator. I wonder if you can switch any of those bits off. You, if you, you might you might not want to put the policing record on there if you uh, if you live in a dodgy area. Paul, my I just wrote something completely opposite, and and you're probably right, not me. I just but actually, if all of this information is readily available, which it is. You know, just because a website doesn't show it not doesn't mean that somebody's not going to go and search it or find out and it will be involved in, in your legal side. So if it's all readily available, why not make it easily accessible? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably the 1980, 1980s agent in me and that sort of thing. So I, I would want every single applicant to get in touch. And if I can reduce the number of reasons why an applicant wouldn't get in touch, then that's that good. Would. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, if it's is it if it's a, a property in an area where the crime rates recently been awful or historic was awful, now is good. You know, are the things that we might want to switch off. But, well, but, you're, but you're absolutely right. If they're going to find it anyway, they're going to find it anyway. If someone's someone's a keyboard warrior, they will find that information, won't they? It's a classic classic case here where we always say we'll go back to the supplier and just clarify a few of those points. So can it be customized? My gut feel would be yes, because um, I, you know, knowing knowing uh, uh, agents are tremendous for saying we just want it exactly the same as everybody else, and then you proceed to ask for it in a million different ways. So I'd be surprised if Bruce and the team there haven't been uh, been questioned on this already. Let's find out. Yeah. Uh, personally, just on though, though all these different subsections. Because um, you know they're doing a lot. A lot of the most um, most functional agency sites out there have elements of this on there, and I really like the way they are presenting it. It's very clean, very very slick and easy to 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 digest. It is, isn't it? Yeah, I was really impressed with the user experience. Because I'd be all like you said, keyboard warriors. Who isn't a keyboard warrior when they're looking to? looking to move you know you're going to be all over this aren't you and I, know, I do know look in my previous obviously CRM we had a web division um, and you know providing that school the, the, the hit rates on things like the school sections and local neighborhood uh, uh, you know sub pages was was phenomenal so it clearly they haven't just added these in here for no reason have they um, and I think that's um, that's going to satisfy even the most demanding of uh, of home searches. No, man, if, if I put my, how could we make this better hat, the only thing I think is missing is maybe a commute section. We could type in where you work That's and it'll tell you, you know, how long your commute is. And it remembers that when you go from property to property to property. They used well, to have one of those London, London, didn't they, Paul? Didn't Pardon? they use that one? They had one for London. Did they Did they extend that out across the country? That was... Yeah, yeah, we, I, I used I, to have one on the website of where I used to work. We had one, but it, it's changed, hasn't it? How long was your commute to work? 13 steps from from from, from the lounge to the kitchen? <laughs> it is a couple of fun. Let's press on. In, in the UK. So really trying to give, you know, a one-stop location for information for buyers to... to to understand a property um, again before making an offer. So we do um, also generate mortgage leads as well. So on the bottom right hand side of this IPAC, um, buyers can submit a lead. Um, these just go through to the branch so we, we can put custom content on the page. Um, buyers can just select which type of service they need, fill in the form and it sends a link through to the branch. Um, our make an offer process at the top bar um, I'll show this on screen so you can see what information uh, needs to be entered. So you've got the, all the full information that um, a buyer or buyers, if, if it's a joint application, would need to complete. They can upload information. 
um, it really helps um, you know streamline um, the the process for how the information is, is gathered for an offer. That what do you think of that, Richard? That my gut feeling there is that feels quite long because for me, if someone wants to make an offer, I want to click a click a button, put the name and the phone number in, how much the offer is, and click send. Now I'll just ring them back. So, what's my opinion? My opinion is. Um, I don't believe any offer will ever be put forward based on the information captured on that form. However, I do believe it will capture a lot of information which the agent may forget to do. So, you know, when we would get an offer, you know, you'd be so excited the offer would come in, you know, who are you using for your mortgage, NatWest, brilliant, and you'd be putting the offer forward. You wouldn't necessarily be taking all of that information at offer stage. I just think it's a good day to capture. I also think that, whilst we all know that the agent isn't going to put that offer forward without a conversation with the applicant or the potential purchaser, they have a feeling, you know, in this 24 hour now world we live in, that they've been able to submit an offer at 9.15 in the evening, rather than getting frustrated and waiting for the agent to open at 9am the following morning. Yeah. But, but I'm absolutely with you. I do not believe anybody is going to automate that offer coming in on email directly out to their vendor, it's still going to be a conversation. Yeah. I'm just looking through these fields now. So sort of rewinding the video a bit, we've got solicitor details here. So I think that's quite a useful kind of conveyance, potential conveyancing lead from the applicant to get you double bubble. Yeah. Um, got the mortgage situation here as well, which is quite good. Um, got the property details of where they live. Uh, yeah. Uh, postcode, yep. So there's potentially a property to sell there as well. Um, and just an extra few questions to make them think about it. So it's not, I guess it's not overly onerous and there is useful information there. And and it's also, you know, we I was certainly guilty that, you know, your offer forms, whatever you used, you might have a conversation with a buyer and a buyer might say, you know, I want to be in in four weeks or whatever, whatever it may be. But very rarely, uh, very, very, very rarely did it go in the sales memo or anything else. So actually, if it is time critical, once you've got it written down, if that buyer's put, you know, do you have any critical events that need to be factored in? You know, when do you need to complete the transaction by? <laughs> if they don't put that in, and then in four weeks time there, you know, on your case saying, I need to complete by the 1st of December, you can refer back to this. I mean, that doesn't solve the problem, but from your vendor, you can't ever be accused of uh, not presenting all of the information of the offer. Yeah, and, and another point that I've only just thought of, so you can tell we're winging it, is um, you know the agent's got a legal responsibility to get the best price possible for the vendor. So having the information here about time critical events puts the agent in a knowledgeable position when negotiating with the buyer in order to get the best price possible for the vendor. You know, if yeah. there is a time critical event coming up, using time as a prep, as a bargaining chip, like we saw with Brexit, yeah. um, could be a way of getting better a better outcome for your vendor. It's great. Mm -hmm. I'll take it all back. I quite like this form. I wish I'd thought <laughs> of it. <laughs> well, I'll press play. All the full information that um, a buyer or buyers, if, if it's a joint application, would need to complete, they can upload information. Um, it really helps, um, you know, streamline um, the, the process for how the information is, is gathered for an offer that needs to be put forward to um, to a vendor. Um, so th th the reason we, we speed up sales is by carrying out all of the onboarding work at the outset for vendor clients um, and, and making it available to buyers via the IPAC, giving them information um, that they can query before they've made an offer, um, which really has shown to help with, with fall throughs. Um, we look after the legal preparation, which includes title information, PIQs, uh, meaning that the conveyances can then proceed with a draft contract at an earlier stage. And the key is that it's really a simple, fast process for agents and, and a no brainer, especially considering the, the, the AML um, service that comes alongside IPACs. Um, the additional benefits are they're a fantastic listing tool. There's no better um, a visual aid for an agent to use on evaluation to discuss the benefits of being legally prepared. Um, we generate um, a, a multitude of, of, of lead types and we provide an IPAC for every listing. 
but we also pay referral fees um, because the IPACs aren't a standalone product. We, we work with solicitors, either the agent's existing firm or a firm that we already work with who then receive all of the, the information to avoid any, any unnecessary duplication. Um, so, um, and then we, we are setting up custom alerts soon for land registry key, key highlights. Um, so in terms of subscription, we, we, we don't charge um, we don't charge an amount for IPACs. We provide everything free of charge. Everything is based mm -hmm. on a, on a and conversion. And we talk about that in a bit more detail when we run through a full demo. Um, but, but, but it very much is positioned as a no, no brainer product um, because we do all of the aforementioned legal preparation, uh, provide a, a great listing tool and we speed up the sales and reduce fall throughs. So thanks for listening. Um, thank you for critiquing uh, Kvufflers and uh, yeah, I look forward to any questions anyone has once, uh, when, once this is, uh, is gone out there. Okay, cool. Well, the critical element there is, first of all, fantastic. You know, it is a no-brainer when it's free, with the one caveat around what is that conveyance in conversion, isn't it? If that, if that's, you know, if that's an achievable, achievable goal, then for you to get IPACs into your business, uh, and, and you know, it will be a differentiator at this at this stage. Uh, yeah, I can see this being this can be a, a really useful um, tool in your kit bag. Particularly if there's conveyancing when on the double bubble when the applicant's coming through and then you get a referral fee on that. Yeah. You know, without having done any extra work, you're getting two lots of conveyancing yeah. referral fees. Yeah. Yeah, monetizing, monetizing contacts you otherwise might not have done. Yeah. The, uh, the critical one there as well is they mentioned, mentioned there about a CRM. I'd love to, I'm going to just do a bit of digging with these guys just to find out uh is it you know bi-directional well, is it bi-directional or whatever else you know you've got in as i said at the beginning there you've got information about making inquiry most of the systems will handle could, i would imagine be able to handle that through things like their portal lead uh tools and things like that there's a range viewings a lot of the systems now have you know have digital tools that enable you to actually plug into that and, and book straight into the diary that would be fascinating. I'm sure if it's not there now, that's where this would all be going in the future. I think I, so. You know, from what we've just seen today, I'm a fan. I and, I and I bleat on about it quite a lot. Why should you buy technology? My opinion is it improves consumer experience, which I believe that does by providing all of that information. It improves user experience, i.e. the agents, because I feel there's a number of conversations they may not need to have now around fixture and fitting so i believe it ticks that and i believe there's probably some efficiencies around you know getting the offers in uh, with a zero price point you know it ticks every box with a caveat around you know conveyancing service conversion rates um but but for me i thought it was really good well, I think it's an eight out of ten for me. What would have made it knocked it up a little bit more from that, uh, uh, Bruce? If it, you know on one of the panel shows or whether you can give us feedback, some more context and detail around how much it's you know reducing uh, sale times, um, uh, in, you know cutting fall throughs. That stuff would add add a real element to the conversations we're having, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, reduce withdrawal rates, fast, faster time to cash, uh, increasing. MA conversion rate because of yeah. you know presenting because it's an instruction winner um, and of course it can be used an instruction winner in different ways it could be the type of thing that you either present in the MA or you sort of send later on saying you know yeah. think about how to market your property here's, here's some here this is what we do or this is what legally prepared means you know there's different ways to use this and I like Absolutely. That. yeah but again, and here's the nice thing, if it is hot off the press or out of there, the hive labs, you know, you're going to have an opportunity here to, because the, the problem is I've been talking, I had so many conversations this week when we're doing our little consultancy sessions with agents and what almost all agents want to do is get to the right tech before it becomes ubiquitous. You know, before you're having to pay for this stuff just because it's expected. You mentioned their floor plans. Everyone has to do floor plans now, but it's not separating you any differently, is it? If you can get to this stuff whilst your competitors don't, you've got that honeymoon period, haven't you? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Thumbs up. Thumbs up from me. Thumbs up. I forget how we do the rating of this. Is it okay? Yeah. Thumbs up from you, Rich. Definitely. 
Caesar says yes. Uh, and Paul, you had the thumbs up. I'm giving it the thumbs up. You got a triple thumbs up there. So well done, Bruce. Uh, Hive, we'll, we'll, we'll want to get some more questions out of you, but congratulations and everybody keep these keep these videos coming because we love covering them. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Cheerio. Everyone's kerfuffling.